everyone. My name is Karen Koshansky. I'm a senior conversation designer at Google. I've been designing voice user interfaces for 25 years, and I can honestly say I'm still amazed and excited by what our voice assistants can do to help people today in this crazy world we live in with coronavirus. The world is changing, and it's changing really quickly. I have a hunch that if you're listening to this talk, that you have probably used a voice assistant BC before Corona. And I expect that if you've used one recently, that your behavior or your requests might have changed in some way. What are the things that you want to know at home? Being at home, we want to stay informed. So we're seeing um, categories such as news, media, and queries about coronavirus increase. What are the symptoms? Has coronavirus reached Hawaii? The number of confirmed cases. People are turning to their voice assistants for this kind of, these kinds of answers. At home, we also want to stay connected. This means family dinners over Google Duo, maybe on your Nest Home Hub. This means that we're trying to connect as best we can over video chat with family and friends that we can't be with. Google is also enabling connections. So um, there is currently a pilot of um, Nest Home Hubs in retirement homes. So here's a group of people who have probably never used a voice assistant before. And we're trying to enable these connections and make it easier for seniors to connect to their loved ones. The thing that is most interesting to me though is that our behaviors are changing. It's that we know at home we have to make do with what we have. And so, for example, queries around recipes and what should I cook for dinner have moved from show me recipes about vegetarian chili to what can I cook with potatoes and eggs, for example. So not only are we trying to help people answer questions about coronavirus specifically, but we're also seeing that there's this change of behavior of what people are asking because they want to be scrappy and they want to make do with what they have. So I want to get into some details and best practices of what we've been striving for, even given the new queries for the assistant and also our changing behavior. The first is to know your user. So it's been so interesting because we are all users. Every one of us stuck at home um, or you know, being away from family. I know the things that I wanna know that I ask the assistant for and I just imagine all of our users trying to get certain types of answers from the assistant. So some queries that the assistant is really good at are, you know, is my flight on time? Or when do the San Francisco Giants play? And now we're changing, we're seeing a change for people asking, is EasyJet flying again? Or has the baseball season been canceled? Part of good design is anticipating the needs of our users and, um, and their pain points. So if you ask, is EasyJet flying again? I was surprised and delighted when I got a good response. In fact, this was a real, real query that I wanted to know. I've had to cancel multiple flights um, in April and May on EasyJet. If you ask, has the baseball season been canceled for our baseball fans, you get a response. As a response to the coronavirus disease, all matches this season have been postponed until further notice. You know, we've been anticipating things like this and working to make sure that our users get the answers. So not only are we thinking about corona specific queries, but we're thinking about those adjacent or natural things that people are going to want to know. The second principle I want to talk about is about trust and getting the information out. So over the years, I have come to realize that the best projects with teams are the ones that there is, a, there is trust between teams and respect, true strong partnerships. And I also firmly believe that we need to instill trust between the user and the assistant. 
you know, in these trying times, we're trying to get the information out there as quick as, pos as quick as possible. And some of that takes time to make sure that the right information gets out. So the assistant delivers information in different ways to wherever our users are. Let me give you some examples. Um, the assistant snapshot was launched not too long ago. This is kind of a curated place, a, a curated list of helpful information. And there are now links in there to coronavirus specific information. Another example, if you ask, you know, when are the Olympics? We've had to update the answer to that. Um, and it says the 2020 Summer Olympics will begin on Friday, July 23rd, 2021, and ends on Sunday, August 8th. You know, the, it's been really important, again, to get the information to our users wherever they are. But we've also been very thoughtful in our responses um, and, not, and, and thinking about the best way to help the help everybody who not only the person who's asking but society in general for example if somebody asks um, I, I want to know about coronavirus testing centers near me our response um, is informative but it also asks people um, to give your health care provider a call before you go because we don't want to overwhelm the testing centers Right? And so just being very thoughtful with each response and how we can best help society in general. Another important point, which is general, um, a, a general principle, is about tapering. In, the, in these times, it is definitely um, the case that we have some um, disclaimers that we want and need to play. For example, if somebody asks how many people have died from coronavirus, we give a response, but we also want to be sure people know that this information changes very rapidly. So we say, keep in mind that the data changes rapidly, so it may be inaccurate or out of date at times, and it goes on. Not information um, that we really want to play, but with information we have to play. But we do it in a way that makes sense. If a user hears it once in one day, they don't hear it again. So then if they've had a follow-up query of how many people have died in Switzerland, how many people have died in Italy, this disclaimer only gets played once per day and we call that tapering. Three, I would say an important thing is to know what you don't know. And this is very difficult. What I mean by that is there are some times we don't have the right information, we, we can't fulfill somebody's request, but what we can do is give smarter answers to them, smarter error prompts, so that they at least know we've understood their request but can't fulfill it. And this too instills trust between the user and the assistant. So um, with, a, with a question like, when will coronavirus end? we say, sorry, I don't have information about that for coronavirus. And we give them a pointer where they might get that information. So that's something that we, we can't, you know, we don't have the answer. We can't fulfill, but we recognize what they're asking. Another example, does Tom Hanks have COVID-19? And we just say, um, you know, sorry, I don't have that exact information, but for general updates on the topic, ask for news about coronavirus. So at least we, we know the general kind of request that the, the bucket of information they're looking for and can be smart about replying and say, we don't have that information. Next, consider the device. Multimodal design means designing an experience across surfaces. So here at Google, we talk about um, a spectrum of multimodal devices, and we design differently depending on the surface, with very much with the same goal of um, being, being very specific about what kind of information a user might hear um, and what a user might see per device. For example, on a voice-only device, our home speakers, definitely the only, the only way to get information to users is through audio. And so we leverage the audio channel to give information. There are voice forward 
devices. These are um, devices like our smart, um, our smart displays, um, and even in even in auto, where we mostly are focusing on audio. But there are times when you can imagine a user glancing at the screen. It's voice first, voice forward, but with a screen. And then we talk about intermodal as well, which is really a balance of visuals and audio, which, which we say today is a lot of your mobile phone. And so we, um, what I wanna do is go through a bit of an example of a coronavirus um, answer and how we've taken the main design across and designed across surfaces. First, let's look kind of at the, at the um, detailed points of, of response. So there's the spoken response. That's something that you hear. Um, so in this example, um, here's the two best seats for two people seated together. Do you want to get these? And that's something that, that the user would hear. But on a um, intermodal device, for example, on a mobile phone, there's also a display text, something that is shown to the user as well, which um, is, can be thought of as a header to the, to the visuals. So here are the best available seats. Would you like them? And so this is something that the user can read. And then there's a set of visuals in some cases. And we also have what we call suggestion chips, which are related, um, potential related responses that a user could, could click on and continue the conversation. So suggestions as a follow-up. So with those part, parts of the experience, um, let's, let's look at the different surfaces. So looking at one example, how many people have recovered from coronavirus? So the answer, according to Wikipedia, as of May 20th, 1,688,630 total recovered cases of coronavirus disease have been reported worldwide. This is the main information. And on a speaker, it's something that we need to play, it's something that the user needs to hear. So in this case, with a voice only device, there is a spoken prompt, no visuals, no display, and no suggestions. Next, moving to a voice forward device, we don't know where the user is. Can they see the screen or not? And we call it voice forward because we, we do make sure that all the information that is useful and needed for the user can be heard as well. So there is a spoken, there is a spoken prompt, it's the same one. But there's a big visual there on the screen. If I'm, if I'm um, cooking across the room, if I'm sitting at the table, I can glance over and I can read that from, from a ways away. Here too, um, so not only do we use visuals um, and a display prompt, and that's, I would say, the, the header, which says recoveries at the top, we also use suggestions. So follow-up queries that would work if a user either said them or tap them, so coronavirus symptoms, coronavirus prevention tips, and so on. And lastly, on intermodal, if somebody says how many people have recovered from coronavirus, we know that somebody is holding the screen, um, that holding their phone, which is a rich, rich medium for delivering a lot of information. People want to know these details. It's just very hard to get at them through, through just audio. And so we just say, here are some details and we give them the information um, that they might be looking for. So there's a, a tab with statistics. Um, in, my, in my case, it came up with um, a personalized, personalized chart on Switzerland, which means that, um, I mean, Google knows, knows where I live, and they've personalized the results even, even, just, um, even just here by Starting on starting on Switzerland, but of course I can go and change that. I can read about treatments, news, and and so on. So we're leveraging the visuals that we have in order to give rich information. Last, I would say, be engaging. This is a crazy time, and um, a lot of this is not fun to work on, I would say. I mean, to think that we're, that we're living through this. But 
we have found ways to be still be creative. Um, the team is working on creative ways to engage people. And so here is a great example of um, the, the team, especially catering, catering towards kids. If you say, hey, Google, help me wash my hands, we will play a 40 second hand washing video that goes with kind of the amount of time that people should be washing their hands. And it's really engaging. Let's let's take a look for a second. Wash, wash, wash your hands for 40 seconds, please. So we'll chase the germs away so you don't cough and sneeze. To wrap up, I've tried to highlight some key conversation design principles that should be used to design any speech experience. Know your user. Be engaging. Think about designing across devices. Think about tapering personalization, anticipating your users' needs. Be where your users are and really try and be helpful as much as possible. With that, I will say stay safe, stay healthy. If you need ideas to keep busy at home, just ask the Google Assistant. Thank you so much.